Hey, what's happening, everybody? It is Thursday night. Time for another how-to with me, your host, Jason Thrifts. How the hell is everybody doing? Good to see you here. Thanks for tuning in. All right, so this one's going to be live tonight because I actually put a little presentation together. And then, I was already planning on being live all the way through. But then the universe said, here you go, Jason. Here's a, here's the exclamation point on your topic today. So we're talking about how to cash in on pop culture. Pop culture is all around us. So let's talk about, for starters, what's pop culture? All right. The the basic definition is modern popular culture transmitted via oh whoops, via the via the mass media and in particularly, particularly at younger people. Fashion, music, and iconography of pop culture offer the perfect medium for profit. So it's all the cool stuff around you. Pop culture is not Shakespeare, Mona Lisa, and Beethoven, but pop culture is Harry Potter, Banksy, and Harry Styles. I didn't mean to have two Harry there. Too weird. But that's what we're talking about. We're talking about all the things that all of us enjoy, no matter what your age. You enjoy some part of pop culture, some of us more than others. Uh, currently, right now, I am wearing a kick ass combo. Iron Maiden, which leaves it on, Iron Maiden Marvel t-shirt. So they took Venom from the Marvel Universe and crossed them with Eddie, Iron Maiden's mascot. And I have this kick-ass t-shirt, okay? That's pop culture. And then all through my office, pop culture is everywhere. On my desk, I got a little Harley Quinn. I got Smee from uh, Peter Pan. I got Slimer from Ghostbusters. So pop culture is everywhere. Oh, I have my slides on order. This is the shelf that I look at every day. This is the top of where I keep all the records that are for sale, all the other tchotchkes that are for sale. These are the shelves. And I could have used that top for more storage for things for sale, but I want to enjoy that top because that's what I see over my monitors. And look at the amount of pop culture things in there. I see some Iron Maiden. I see a lot of Star Wars. I see Prince. I see uh, Planet of the Apes. All kinds of fun stuff. That is an entire shelf of pop culture. All right. So my reason sold and why they sold. That's the whole point of how to cash in on pop culture. How do you, the eBay seller, the Etsy seller, the Depop seller, take this knowledge and cash in? All right. Well, you got to know what's hot and what's happening. This is a Sex Pistols uh, button-down shirt that is so cool. And I wish it was my size, but I am surely not a small. I have not been a small since I was in kindergarten. I kid you not. Uh, but I had it listed for a long time, and I was very concerned about the size of the small. But guess what? Why did it sell this week? Who knows? Uh, because, hmm, boy, my slides are out of whack. <laughs> All righty. I'll come, I'll come back to that. Uh, because there's a show on Hulu right now about the history of the Sex Pistols. Told from the viewpoint of the guitar player, Steve Jones, called Pistol. It's on Hulu, and it's directed by Danny Boyle, who directed a, a thousand great movies. Uh, but basically, his it, the one that everyone knows is Train Spotting. So that show drops, and then my shirt sells. So that shirt didn't sell for about a year, and that show comes out, and boom. All right, so let me uh, back up, it, and I actually went to school for pop culture. Bowling Green State University in Ohio, just south of Toledo has a department of pop culture, and you can get a degree in pop culture. I didn't quite last the whole time, so I never got my degree on paper. But since I end up having my own TV show on the Spike Network, I pretty much feel I graduated because I became, although very tiny, a, a part of pop culture. So uh, I feel I've earned my degree. All right, just sold these Converse, designed by Millie Bobby Brown uh, in the last couple of weeks. And why did those sell in the last couple of weeks? Do you know who Millie Bobby Brown is? Because if you do, you would know that she is one of the stars of Stranger Things. And Stranger Things just dropped season four. First half on May 27th, second half on July 1st. Now, Stacy, my wife, found those Millie Bobby Brown Converse All-Stars about a year ago. We've had them up, and every once in a while, she would check and go, Hey, did my those shoes sell yet? No, no, no. So I dressed the price a smidge. And then season four dropped. That has been the biggest one of the biggest hits on Netflix. And boom, they sold. 
Speaking of, why do I have Kate Bush and Metallica on the same slide? Well, I just talked about season four of Stranger Things, and I'm not going to ruin nothing. So if you have not watched yet, just knowing that they're in there is not ruining anything. I will not talk about what the role of these songs play, but a song from Kate Bush and a song from Metallica both play a vital role in the show. Now, if you've watched it, please don't ruin the chat. Just let me explain how awesome pop culture has fueled the love for uh, 30-year-old songs. Okay, this is Kate Bush, and this is the things on eBay. This is the chart that you can see on Therapy. Whoops, that's the way I wanted to go. Uh, so here's Kate Bush. Do, 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 do. She's selling some things, selling some things. Oh, hey, Stranger Things drops. Okay, because her song in the first half of season four is a vital part. So as you can see, meteoric rise on Kate Bush stuff being sold on eBay. And guess what? Her song topped the, the Billboard Global Charts. Her song came out in 85. 1985. It's 2022, and she has a global, worldwide number one, thanks to a TV show that is one of the hottest things in pop culture. Now, Metallica, the specific song Master of Puppets, comes out, and here's Metallica. And I didn't even put anything else specific. I didn't put Master of Puppets CD, cassette, record, t-shirt, nothing. I put Master of Puppets. So, look at this. It's pretty average. Do to do, there's a bunch of stuff being sold. Hey, July 3rd drops and the, the the second half of the season comes out. Whoops. And boom, look at that. Skyrockets. So whatever is happening in pop culture, the way people react to it is they go buy it. Whatever it is. Is it a book? Is it a song? Is it a record? Is it an album? Whatever it is. Skyrockets. People immediately, new, new kid, younger kids go, oh, that's a cool song. I'm going to go buy the record. Us older folk is like, man, where is my Metallica? Uh, uh, Master of Puppets. I got to go pick that up. And they go to eBay or Amazon or Discogs or Macari and buy something. That is how you cash in on pop culture. What's hot around you? Okay. So because of this, Master of Puppets, Puppets entered the Billboard Hot 100 chart for the first time ever. It did not chart when it was released in 1986, but it's charting now in 2022, thanks to a streaming TV show. Do you see the power of capitalizing on pop culture? So the way you put it to use is, I have a ton of music around this office. Not everything is listed. I have thousands of pieces not listed yet. If I had anything Metallica with Master of Puppets on it, I would have ran over to my office the second that Stranger Things dropped and listed it because it would have sold. I didn't have anything. I didn't have the Kate Bush. But if I did, or if I had something listed already, I would immediately kick up the price because it's going to sell through everyone's stock like that. And then, you know, supply and demand. The supply will be less. The demand will be greater. But we're going to talk about that and how I really understood and learned about all that in a second. All right. Why did this Love Letters from Elvis CD sold? And I got to tell you, this is a uh, Debbie, my good friend, my producer. It's a Debbie special. This has been rolling around my office for over five years, maybe six. It's been on Amazon. It's been on eBay. It's been on Discogs. It's moved all over the place, but it's sealed and it's an import from Japan. I'm like, someday somebody's going to want this. And boom, it sold for 50 bucks in the last couple of weeks. And why is that? Why did it sell recently? Because the movie dropped. And again, the Elvis stuff skyrocketed. All right. So let's, instead of looking at the chart, let's go to Terra Peak and look at the amount of items. So I looked two weeks before the movie dropped, June 10th through the 16th. Uh, Elvis stuff sold, uh, there was 4,833 items sold uh, two weeks before the movie dropped for a total of uh, almost $157,000. All right, here's the week right before the movie, June 17th to June 23rd, 5,297 items for a total of $160,000. Now, here's the week it came out, 8 1,704 items for a total of $272,000. And then the week following the weekend it came out, 8,036 items for a total of $245,000. So pre-movie release, 10,000 items sold for $317,000. Post-movie release, 
Almost 17,000 items for over half a million dollars. Look at those two numbers. 10,000 to 17,000. That is the power of pop culture. People see something, they hear something, they read something, and they got to go buy it immediately. That is how we all live nowadays. Oh, and that was a 63.24% increase over the weeks before the movie dropped. Now, I'm also guessing that some of those sales leading up to the movie were because people saw the, you know, when you have a movie coming out, you send the star out to do the nighttime talk shows, you see the commercials on TV. So people are already anticipating the movie, but bam, bam, the increase ramped as it drops is in cra is crazy. All right. Now, where I started to really put this into work for me and really started to think about, did anyone famous die today? Now, when I wrote that slide, that was a couple days ago. We A lot of you already talked about who died today, but we'll get to her in a second. So hang, put a pin in her for a second. Did anyone famous die today? When Ray Liotta died, the uh, actor uh, famous uh, in a lot of movies, uh, but definitely Goodfellas would be in his main role. He died on May 26th uh, of this year. Uh, Ray will be missed. Um, but when he died, as we just demonstrated, people go and they buy stuff. Now, I call it the wave. You want to catch the wave, but you want to catch it as it's about to break. Okay, if you don't know anything about surfing, you're paddling, you paddle, paddle, and here comes the wave. And as it starts to break down, then you're, you're about done. The fame of the human depends on how long the wave goes. If it's someone small that had maybe fame 30 years ago, wasn't famous anymore, it'll be a blip. If it is someone huge, like a David Bowie and a Prince, it'll go and go and go. He, a month later, it'll still be hot. Oops, excuse me. Okay, can you tell me by this chart when Ray Liotta died? It's pretty easy to see. So the way we mourn in 2022 is someone that was a hero to us, someone that we enjoyed their work, someone that we looked up to, we run to the internet and purchase something of theirs. We buy a movie from them. We buy a book they wrote. We buy a t-shirt they're on. We buy an autographed 8 by 10 glossy, and then when we get it, we frame it and we put it up. But it is very easy to see the moment Ray died. I mean, if that doesn't show you that, oh my gosh. So in the thrifting board, my free group that helps thrifters of all ages, shape, sizes, and lengths of time of selling online, we talk about everyone who died because the immediate thing is people go online to buy something. Now, see how it calmed down after that? His spike was quick. Prince's stayed up there. David Bowie's stayed up there. But his was quick. So even if you loved Rayota, Ray Liotta, and you want to mourn, the moment to list your Ray Liotta item, no matter what it is, is that day. Maybe the next. But these actors, I mean, Ray Liotta, a great actor, but he doesn't have the power of a Prince or David Bowie. So it's going to be quick. If you listed on June 13th, you've already missed the wave. You've already missed it. The moment people are saddest and buying the most is right after they die. Okay, so Polly Walnuts just died. I, you know what? If you would have said a week ago, what is Polly Walnuts' real name? I don't think I would have known. I mean, I've watched every episode of The Sopranos. He was an amazing part of The Sopranos. I loved Polly Walnuts. But Tony Shirocco, uh, Shirico died uh, July 8th uh, at 79. Hmm, where did he die? So here's a chart from January 1 to July 11. I mean, there are there are gaps where there is no Tony Shirico stuff being sold. But boom, he unfortunately passes. People go online and buy right away. Now, here's how I learned about the wave. All right, chat. What was Farrah Fawcett's mistake in the day she died? What mistake she, did she did she make by picking the day she died to die? Now, of course, I know she didn't really pick it. But the day she died, what was her big mistake? Because we were all mourning Farrah Fawcett. Those of us that had her poster when we were young boys or young girls, when she died, there you go. Yep. Uh, no, Becky, you got it wrong. It was actually Michael Jackson, not Prince. Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson. So we were all mourning Farah, and then Michael died, the biggest star ever of all time. 
and every single person on the planet forgot Faraday. We only mourned her for a, a hot minute. So she dies on June 25th, 2009, and then Michael dies. And so here's what happened, and here's when I really got to understand it. So Michael Jackson, the biggest uh, uh, superstar on the planet of all time, every record store in the country had two copies, brand new, of bad, dangerous, thriller, off the wall. They had two copies. Every store always kept two copies in stock. Then if you're a used store, you probably had a couple used thrillers, a couple used bads. The second he died, every single person who hadn't had a Michael Jackson CD in a while ran to the store and bought one. Because although the internet was there in 2009 and we were selling online, people still definitely loved going to stores. Well, within an hour, every store in the country was out of Michael Jackson CDs, new and used. And so if you had a used copy of Thriller, the day before he died, that used copy of Thriller, because it sold so many copies, was worth about $2 online. By the day after he died, by June 26th, that Thriller was selling for $60 used. Now, it's back to selling for $2 used, but because people mourned him so bad, they'd pay anything. And I have Michael Jackson collectible music and stuff, but I sold it all. But Sony understood the power, and Sony, which was Michael's record label, they stopped all their plans because they saw what was going on. And so if you were an artist on Sony Records about to drop a, a CD that week, you were screwed because they stopped production at all plants and turned it on to all Michael Jackson CDs. But by the time they pressed them and sealed them and got them in trucks and got them into record stores and they got on the shelf, it was about a week and a half, two weeks. So those of us that happen to have Michael Jackson music laying around skyrocketed, okay? But Michael and Prince and Bowie, they're the rare air. The Tony Sharikos, the Ray Liotas, they're the norm. Comes up and it drops. So if you have something by the person who died, who just got married, who just got divorced, who just ended up in a scandal, that's the moment to list it, okay? That is the absolute moment to list it. Now, the universe uh, wanted to help me with my how-to today and really put an exclamation point on it. So uh, this afternoon, mm, oops, sorry, I gotta go move to the, I gotta move to the web. Excuse me. This afternoon, uh, Ivana Trump died, and I thought, hmm, how much merch did Ivana have? So let me go look. Now we're gonna go all the way back to. Uh, July 10th. So she had jewelry. Okay. So, so there was a couple pieces of jewelry sold on July 10th and then nothing. There was not one Ivana Trump thing sold on July 11th. There was exactly one thing sold on July 12th and exactly one Ivana Trump thing sold on July 13th. Here's where we were at right before the show today, 70 Ivana Trump items. This is all sold in the last two hours. If that doesn't show you proof right there that death turns into sales, I don't know what will prove it to you. Because a Michael Jackson, a Ray Liotta, because of his movies and stuff, has merch, has stuff to sell. Ivana has been out of the spotlight for so long that I was like, hmm, what kind of bump is she going to have? It's crazy. So I set this up 20 minutes, 30 minutes ago. So that was the last thing sold 30 minutes ago. All right, so one more thing is sold. So there's been 71 items today. And just three days ago, there wasn't any item sold. Okay? Yeah, so people oftentimes get mad that uh, we talk about it in the thrifting board. They're like, the body's not even dead yet. You, you, are, you are taking advantage of a situation. But they don't get mad at us for talking about it. The newspaper is going to report it, and that's how they're going to pay their bills today because they put the news in that people want to read. The talk shows are going to talk about it, and that's how they get paid by the advertisers. But people tuned in because they want to see what Jimmy Fallon has to say about David Bowie passing. Everyone talks about it. Everyone profits off of it because they talk about it because that's what's fueling the news that day. We don't have a news program. We don't own a newspaper. But what we do do is we sell things online, and a lot of us have pop culture stuff laying around. Movies, videos, CDs, figures, okay? So when things happen, 
that's the moment to go do it. Now, if you are not up to date on your pop culture, if you had no idea who Harry Styles was in my initial uh, uh, sharing what you should be following with, here's how you keep up. One of the easiest ways to keep up is tune into the Today Show on NBC every day about 825. Now, they do move it sometimes depending on how the day is going, but I would say 90% of the days, Carson Daly or his fill-ins do pop start at 825. They'll go through the four to six hottest things in, in pop culture today. And so they do that Monday through Saturday, so six days a week. So you're getting about 30 tips of pop culture every single week in a three-minute segment. Uh, I still read a newspaper every day. USA Today, the life section is the entertainment section. So, of course, that's full of what's, you know, what movies are coming out, who died, who got married. But the money section, too, talks about the brands and what's happening with them. So it could be an article about Marvel Comics. It could be an article about Disney. So both those sections really tell you what is happening in pop culture. Uh, I've listened to this radio show, Heidi and Frank, out of L.A. for 22 years now. Have not missed an episode, uh, especially since we can stream now. I haven't, I haven't missed a minute in probably 15 years. Uh, but there are four hours a day, five days a week. And they have a lot of fun and shenanigans, but they have a lot of news. And they usually they make the news fun and shenanigans too. But anything I didn't catch just on the internet or on my news programs, I catch on Heidi and Frank. So all day long, I'm being fueled with pop culture information. And then Good Morning America has a pretty great YouTube channel, and they have all their segments broken down into short clip videos, and uh, they, too, have a lot of good pop culture content. So that, there's another place to find out what's going on. What's going on. Uh, uh, if you like podcasts, NPR has a great one called the Pop Culture Happy Hour. And then just your feed on Facebook. Your friends talk about what's hot in pop culture. Mutants are now in the MCU, my buddy David Outline said. I haven't seen what that means yet. I know what it means because I happen to uh, catch something else. If those words mean nothing to you, you are definitely a little bit out of touch with pop, pop culture. But if you if you start to tune into things that talk about it, you'll, you'll understand. Uh, but I'm excited for that statement, and I'm going to probably get to that statement uh, on a show I'm going to watch in the next week or two. So. Uh, your friends talk about what movies they went to. Uh, the big summer tour, Motley Crue, Def Leppard, Joan Jett, and Poison is in Cleveland, my hometown today. <laughs> I think my entire graduating class of 1989, those that still live in Cleveland, is at that show. So many of my friends have posted pictures and videos from that concert right now. So your friends talk about what's happening in music, in movies, in literature, in TV shows, in streaming. And so your own feed tells you what's happening in pop culture. The end. Now, uh, I didn't have a chance to look at if there's any questions because I was doing this one live. Any questions before I send you off into the pop culture frenzy? Uh, so you learn, 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 learn. <laughs> yes, that's another way. See, that's one way I, uh, Sprung Adventures has a up on me. I don't have any children. Kids tell you everything that's hot. So you're, you're a parent who's, you know, in their late 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever it is. Your kid's telling you what's hot if you don't know it, for sure. Oh, yeah. How, how did I even have that as a slide? Yeah, duh. I am on TMZ 87 times a day. I am a, a vampire for, for information. I want to know who's arrested, why this car's wrecked. I want to know who died. I want to know who's divorced. I want to know why Snooky's all angry. I want to know all these things. And so I stay up on TMZ all day long. Look, Kanye West is getting sued today. So Kanye's in the news. Not that Kanye's never not in the news, but he's always in the news. So all day long, I am keeping up on, on uh, pop culture. All right? Oh, uh, uh, there was a question earlier. Thanks, Mom. Do you risk your list items a higher price? So if I would have had any Metallica things or Kate Bush things related to those two songs listed, as soon as I realized they were hot, if they hadn't sold yet, I would have kicked up the price. Uh, there was uh, a DJ, uh, a Vici, is that his name? I had two of his hats, uh, ball caps listed in my store. I was teaching a uh, in-person class. 
we were going from the thrift store to lunch. He dies, and we ha- we're going to be talking about how death uh, spurs sales. Totally spaced. I had two of his hats, and they had been for sale for probably six, eight months. Sold like that. Now, had I thought about it, I probably would have kicked the price up at least 20%, knowing people are coming to buy stuff. So, yeah, that's what you should do. Uh, and if you have, like, say, say Metallica hits and you've got Master of Puppets, you're just about to list it, don't look at yesterday's solds to base your price. It's going to skyrocket the day it gets hot. Okay. So, I was looking at Ivana Trump books. Her book sold for 10 bucks and 40 bucks. The 10 bucks are the people who listed it a week ago, two months ago, three months ago. That's the going rate. The 40 bucks are the people that had it and just listed it or were smart enough to kick the price up. So, yes, definitely kick your price up when something hits in pop culture and uh, you want to uh, capitalize the most. Make sense? <laughs> See, Joanne's a little behind on pop culture today. She's about uh, four hours behind. Uh, just found out that Ivana uh, uh, Ivana died. Well, that's 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 the real rub. How do you gauge how much to raise the price? You know, um, you could wait. You could hold off a minute or two. Like, okay, so Ivana dies, and since then, seventy things have been sold. So, if I would have had her book laying around here that I hadn't listed yet, I would actually let a couple sell and see what's going on. Oh. They're now around 40 where they were 10 a day ago. Absolutely. So I'll put it up for 40 bucks and go right in the pack and keep on trucking. Now, if it, it and look, let me tell you, today's the day. Ivana's wave is going to be one day. Uh, on Monday, there'll be nothing hot about selling Ivana Trump stuff. Guarantee it. But Michael's, Michael's lasted. And and my, the morning went worldwide. And the longer the morning went and the, and the, the, the less that there were products available, it went insane. And so with those, but then I, I learned I actually sold a little too quick. And I got good money. Like my used thriller sold for 40 bucks. But two days later, it was 60 bucks. And so I learned, okay, I backed up a little bit. When Prince died, I had a huge Prince CD collection. Now, here's the other thing, too. Say it's your personal collection. Uh, you know, I try and convince people when Prince died, sell your Prince CDs, especially the rare ones. I can't. Those are my memories. No, the piece of plastic isn't your memory. The song is. Put it on your computer. Burn it there. And guess what? Six months, eight months, 10 months, a year later, you can buy that exact CD back for a fraction of the cost. You know, when Prince died, I could sell a regular version of $19.99 for like $30, whereas the day before, it was two bucks. Nowadays, back to $2. So kind of like playing the stock market. Sell when it's high and then buy back when it's low because it all comes back. No matter how big the, the superstar is, that way will come down crashing down, and then you'll be back to normal. And then you can rebuild your collection at a fraction of the cost. So you basically could take an entire collection, make a thousand dollars, and get it back. And and you had a thousand dollars to put in your pocket. Because that's about what I made on my Prince collection. Now, I didn't build the whole thing back yet, but when I run it, when I run into things at stores, I'm like, oh, yeah, I need that. I need to bring that back. But I made a grand. I made a grand on a collection I loved, but I can rebuild it really cheap and easy. Yeah, exactly, Todd. That's what I did with Prince. So it, it helps me to teach it because I did that with a specific artist. I'm a huge Prince fan. My CD collection was probably, oh, geez, 200 CDs because it, there was a lot of promos and import singles and da-da-da-da-da. It wasn't just full albums. There's a lot of extras. And I had a lot of vinyl, too. And so, yeah, I made a grand. I made a grand over about a three-week uh, period on a Prince collection that I listened to on, on a normal basis, but, you know, Probably some of the promo CD singles I didn't listen to in forever. So it made me money. Put money in my pocket, and then I can go buy other Prince things later on. What did I just sell? Oh, no, auction edit. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. If you have any pop culture questions, I'm your guy. Kind of like Tiki Mugs. Kind of like CDs. Even though I'm in my 50s now, I still go to concerts where the people are mystified that my wife and I don't have kids. We saw Dua Lipa, and I got asked, and Stacey got asked at several times, where's your kid? Oh, no, no, we're here because we like Dua Lipa. Yes, we're the old creepy couple, but we still like very young things, both TV, I mean, not both, but TV, music, movies. Uh, I'm still a 14-year-old kid inside, and and based, based on a lot of my tastes, I'm a 14-year-old girl. 
Yes, smash that like button, please. Trust me when I tell you, if you can keep up with the pop culture, the second someone gets married, the second someone ends up in a scandal, the second someone dies, you can get to your online store and list something or up the... <laughs> that was a bump. Uh, you will make money. So thank you very much all for tuning in. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you've never subscribed. Thank you all. Have a wonderful evening. And uh, I'll catch you around the thrift store. Bye-bye, everybody. Ah, just kidding. Bye-bye, everybody.